Good morning, my friends. Joy here. And it is a lovely Monday morning. And we're getting ready today, August 30, 2021, to take RV number one to the Ford dealership to get an oil change because my husband wants everything perfect with it. So hopefully we'll get it on the market sometime this week. So let's see what we're going to talk about today in our little book. And for my new people, which I don't think there's many new people on this channel, <laughs> this is Illustrated Words of Jesus for Women, and you can find it in my Amazon store. My Amazon store is always up above in the description box. And if you'll go there and buy anything in the whole wide world, I might make a few cents. You don't have to buy just what's in my store. So it doesn't cost you any more. won't be any different on returns or anything, but I would make a little bit of money. So that would be nice. A little being the key word. <laughs> Today is called willing and weak. I think maybe it should be willing but weak. We'll see. What did Jesus say? Whatever it was, it was in Mark 14, 38. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Oh my goodness, is that ever true? Have I ever learned it in this life? Paul said we must crucify the flesh daily. And we must. Oh, some people that I love very much have a really, really, really bad time crucifying the flesh. Keeps me upset a lot, but then again, I always have to tell myself, they're all grown up, they're adults, what they do or don't do is not your problem. So, cast your cares on the Lord. I know a lot of you, a lot of you have had issues with family members and it just breaks your heart and I understand the heartbreak, I truly do. But we must trust God and at least our loved ones are still alive. I know a lot of people, I know, had a very young lady work for me one time and she had lost her little girl. I think her little girl was like 10 or 11 and she was out on a four-wheeler riding around in the woods and somehow had a wreck and was killed. And that poor mama, she was just messed up because of it. She was just messed up, I believe, to the point of being an alcoholic. And I just think that's so sad that she was hurting her own self because of losing a daughter. So in our case, if we have a loved one, a relative, an aunt, an uncle, a sister, a brother, a child, whoever, if they're still alive, God still has time to get through to them, doesn't he? Okay, let's see what the lady says today. Wow, did Jesus have this one right? <laughs> Your spirit may want to obey and serve. Your spirit may want to honor the body and health God gave you. Your spirit may want to show love and kindness to all people around you. But sometimes your body cannot keep up with your spirit and you stumble and give in to the temptation. Turning away from those things your spirit wants to do. Jesus tells us here to stay focused on him. Watch and pray. Because if you aren't focused, then no matter what your spirit longs for, you will fall into temptation. Yeah, you'll do more than fall into it. <sighs> you'll fall into it and stay there and not be able to dig your way back out again. Remain focused on staying close to Jesus. Let's see what it says at the bottom today. I think this is Paul. Yeah. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. Now that is a mouthful and hard to understand. I don't know what the law has to do with it. I agree that the law is good. Maybe he agrees that 
Jesus' words are good, and Jesus' way is good, and God's way is good. Maybe that's what he's calling the law. But evidently, Paul had a problem with this, too. You know, Paul was a very, very evil person. He was having Christians killed. Didn't he hold Stephen's coat while they stoned Stephen? Um, I should look that up before I tell it to you, but you all can look it up. Look up the story of Stephen. Yeah, Paul was an evil person, having people put in prison, having people killed. He was a very evil person. And I always say, and my mother always said, if God knocked Paul off his horse, he can knock this person off of his, her horse. <laughs> so, I don't know, he can knock them off their car, I guess, since none of these people have horses, but knock them off their truck, knock them off their car, knock them off their roof, knock them off their chair, knock them off of something. Lord, I pray, please help them dig their way out of addictions and temptations. Help the people that we love so much avoid temptation and always let their spirit be the main one in charge of their body, which is the temple of the Most High God. I, I just, I just want to cry. I see all the time, all the time, everywhere, young, beautiful, teenage even, girls, boys, men, women, and they've got tattoos all over their beautiful, beautiful skin, their arms. I saw a man with a word written across his head the other day. I've seen many of them with things on their necks. Oh, to me, these tattoos just scream, I am a rebellious person and you are not going to tell me what to do. Well, Joy, I have a tattoo. Well, I have a tattoo. Well, if you do, you do. Maybe you're not rebellious at all. Maybe you thought you were honoring God somehow by getting it. I don't know. I think it's heathen, myself. Although, when I see men who have tattoos from being in the army or being a marine or being a soldier or whatever, I think, well, number one, it's man, and I think it's a masculine thing. And number two, they did serve the country, and I guess they feel like if... Uh, they want to be proud of what they did they deserve a tattoo so i'm kind of up and down and all around on the tattoo issue <laughs> but what i see just breaks my heart oh especially especially a young beautiful girl comes up to wait on me in a restaurant or i see her at a gas station or i don't ever go anywhere so I don't see them in a whole lot of places, but they'll have like a scary skeleton with blood, blood on its teeth, right here in their arms, scary, and over here some scary animal, a snake, or, I'm like, why, why, you're so young, you're so beautiful, your skin is your largest organ, and God made it so perfect, why? Why are you doing that to yourself? How did I get off on tattoos? Because I think it's evil. And I think it's a temptation that these young people don't even consider a temptation. They just say, oh, this movie star is doing it, and that movie star is doing it, and the basketball player is doing it, and the football player is doing it, and the whatever movie star. Um, and they just do it. But then they don't realize, well, maybe they do realize you know, they're putting something on their body that they can never, ever get off. It's there forever. And, you know, most young people don't mature. You know, some of them got to be over 50 and 60. You know, sometimes I wonder, dear, dear Lord, what exactly did you mean by when they are mature, they will not depart from it? Exactly what did you mean by mature? Did that mean like 80, 90? <laughs> I'm still wondering. <laughs> okay, dear ones, I love you. Pray for you. Pray for your loved ones. God truly is greater than anything we can ask of Him. So we must totally, totally trust Him, even though sometimes our flesh 
wants to take over when we know our spirit is the one that will speak truth and proper direction to us because that's where the Holy Spirit lives. Think of it as your conscience. You know, the God part of you that talks to you, speaks to you, and tells you, you shouldn't be doing this, this is wrong, you know this is wrong, you shouldn't be doing this, and I have a person in my own family, I think I have told you this before. A Christian, supposedly, this person thinks they are a Christian, said to me, I'm going to quit going to church because I know God will tell me not to do what I'm doing. Hello? What part of your human anatomy do you think was talking to that person? Was that the spirit talking? Mm -mm. The spirit was being suppressed, 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 squeezed into a tiny little box that it can't get out of, and the flesh took over totally and completely. And oh boy, can you see it? Can you see it? So, dear ones, pray. Always. We talk about that so much. I've got to go. Jerry's waiting for me downstairs. He's going to drive RV number one to the Ford dealership. I'm going to follow in his truck. <laughs> then we're going to both come back home and then I'm going to make a video for my other channel. So, find me over there if you're interested. I'll be back tomorrow.